I want to use God to 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 use for your own interest. If you want to use the word of God to, to justify what you think, if you want to use the word of God just if you want to use God in in let's say if you want to even diminish God because in this case you say you say that you are a God. If you want to think that you are a God, that you are above God, if you want to be a God, this is what is gonna happen. Because God does not share his glory, Isaiah for the truth thing. He said, I will not share my things. I will not give it to you. He said, so here is what he said. He said, I will not destroy you. But a stranger will come and destroy you. And what the stranger will destroy, he specifically will destroy the beauty of your wisdom. So the Lord was telling me this. He said, what I will destroy to the stranger is the, the makeup that you put on your face. I'm not coming to kill you. I'm going to remove your makeup. You see, I'm coming to remove that makeup. I'm not coming to kill you. I'm coming to remove that makeup. You see, I'm coming to remove whatever you've put on uh, around you and whatever you covered yourself with. So that you will be naked in front of God. God is saying, you, you if a thinker, thinking that you have the same power as God, thinking that you can put God aside and just do what you want, thinking that you can use God to serve you instead of serving God and worshiping Him, thinking that God is just a provider and He's more than that, and you just want to diminish God. Say, I will remove that makeup, that picture that you think you have. Everything you think you have will be removed. Just because just some can be naked in front of God. You say it's not my hand that will kill you, but it's the hand of strangers. The people you don't know. I'll take my example. You know, I had a car and a nice house in front of that. So so proud. And the Lord was just sometimes he was speaking to me and put this stuff to this, and I was so proud. I just thought that you know, I live in my life in this house until a few months ago. I was thinking, 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 I was you have to serve him. You have to obey. When I say something about the time, you have to obey. When I say something about your life, about your own family, okay, you have to obey. But you're doing what you want and wanting for to show up with your heart. Just because of the nature and say, God, I need your help. Oh, that's you, Daddy. Just because of the but if your volume is not very clear so we're talking here uh based on music chapter 20 we're talking about the region of tea the prince of tea the prince of the the king the prince king kind of things who does not change his mind who thinks that everything does right So, tear is the region of people who unfortunately forgot God and decided to lean on their own intelligence and on their personal glory. So, child of God, children of God, let's be careful. May our person, our personality, our character not become God. May not become God. We are not God, we never become God. But when we start to think that we are God, then we start to put our personality, our person above God. Mm -hmm. 
Can you hear me now? You should be able to yeah, hear I me. Yeah, I can hear you now. Uh -huh. Oh, so you couldn't hear anything I was saying here. You guys didn't hear anything? The second time that we connected, that's when we lost um audio. But the first time, everything was fine. Yeah, um, it's because I was... um. I pressed the button on my computer and just turned everything off. So now you should be able to hear me. Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, so I was saying, I'm going to take it back a little bit upper. In the book of Ezekiel, chapter 28, from verse 1, the Lord is talking about the region of Tyre. Tyre meaning the region of the stone, the region of People who stand on their position, they are difficult, to, they cannot be burned, they cannot be moved. They stand on what they think, what they want, what they, you know, whatever they think, they just stand on it. And those people, unfortunately, are sometimes the same people who find themselves using the word of God to serve their own interest. And because they serve their own interest, Sometimes you think they are God, as the Bible says. The Bible says you think you are God. You, you, you want to be God. You want to, you say you reign on the seas. It's in the book of Ezekiel chapter 28, from verse 1 to 4, in this case. The Lord says that. And he says, just because you think that, it's okay for you to think that. But here's what I'm going to do. The Lord says, I will not destroy you directly. But I will destroy whatever you consider your beauty, whatever you consider your splendor. That's what I will destroy. He, he, he says it in, from, from verse 7 to verse 10. And he says, I will send strangers, it's not me, strangers to do so. So that whatever you've put on your face, whatever makeup you've put, that makes you think that you're higher and more powerful than God, you find yourself now naked in front of God, and I gave the example of me when, and I gave the example of me when I when I when I lost my car, I really loved that car. That car was my baby. I even called it my baby. And at the same time, I loved the car. Things started to fall apart. I hear of my dad. I hear of things happening. I'm like, wow, Lord, what? Thank God I had a good friend. Because without friends, I don't know what we would do. So, the Lord made me go through that. Because that car was my pride. That car was my thing of God. I will listen to you everywhere, but not this, this car is my thing. Even if you made me understand 10,000 times that I cannot afford it, I love the car. I'll stay with it. I'll drive it. I'll be proud. I'll brag with it. Until the Lord removed the car by a stranger. <laughs> exactly a stranger because I woke up, the car wasn't there. A stranger took it. My pride was gone. So the Lord comes and says, you who thinks that you're higher than God, you who sometimes does not know how to leave your wisdom, leave your intelligence, and take the word of God and approach the things the, the, the godly way, the divinely way, you, I will not kill you. I'll just remove your beauty. What you consider your splendor, I'll remove it. Not by my own hand, but through the hand of a stranger. And that's why you notice that sometimes the most, the, the times where we feel the most ashamed or the most uh, vulnerable in front of God, the most naked in front of God, are the times when something happened to somebody, sometimes you don't know the person. Amen. So the reason of tear. It's a reason of people who unfortunately forgot about God. And they were lay, leaning on their own intelligence and their personal glories. So children of God, let's be careful. Let, let nobody think 
or let his personality or person become God. May our personalities not become a God. May our personalities not become an idol. May us not become God, God in our mind just because we think that we are better and we think that what we think is better and what we think doesn't need to be corrected or revised. Because sometimes it's just because we don't want correction, we don't want revision of what we think. We don't want God to review it and say it's not right. So we think that we are higher. No. Children of God, let's pay attention to that. Let's be careful. So we are talking about the extremism of Tyr. Now we're going to talk about the extremism of Sidon or Sidon. Amen. Let's go into the word of God. So after talking to Sidon, God says this. I'm going to summarize this. He says, When I will gather the house of Israel in the midst, in the middle of the people of the different tribes and people they have been separated into, I will manifest my holiness, my glory at the eyes of the nations, at the eyes of the nations. And I will leave in the country or in the land that I've given to my, and they will live in the land that I've given to my servant Jacob. They will live there in security and they will build houses and they will plant vine, vineyards. Vineyards or vineyards, I don't know, sorry, please correct me. Um, they will live in security and I will exercise my judgment against all those who were um, judging them who were mistreating them, they will know that I am God. They will know that I am the everlasting God. Ezekiel chapter 28, verse 25 to 26. Sorry, I had it in French, so I translated. Sorry. So, first thing first, the Lord is coming here, he's saying, all the people, let me, let me find it in English so that I don't, I don't, Destroy the word of God because it's not good. He said, when I gathered the house of Israel from the peoples among whom they are scattered, and I'm, and I'm hallowed, and I'm hallowed in them in the sight of the Gentiles, then they will dwell in their own land, which I gave to my servant Jacob. So he said, when I gather the house of Israel from the peoples among whom, among whom they are scattered. So there was a there was one group of people called Israel. Amen. And that group of people was scattered into different groups. This makes me think of the church. Did you know that there were over 45,000 Christian de denominations in the world? 45, over 45,000 Christian denominations in the world right now. So we were all Christians. But all of a sudden, we were scattered. Denomination, denomination. You know, there is a street here in D.C. called 16th Street. And on 16th Street, there's like 50 different churches, different type of churches. You don't even know. Church of Zion, Church of the Third Eye, Church of Christ, Church of Jesus. Every single, I was astonished when I was, I was like, wow. But then I was even more astonished when I heard and I learned that there were more, there were more than 45,000, more than 40,000 denominations in the world. So we know the most famous one, Catholics, Protestants, Evangelists, Baptists, Orthodox, Methodists, Lutherians. We know the most famous one, but there are more than 45,000 of them. And all those were created on the base of the Bible and on different versions of the Bible, of the Word of God. Some versions of the Word of God were received in dreams. Some others were written by men. Some others were changed uh, by other people. Some others were written by people inspired by other spirits than the Holy Spirit. It's so much things. So the Lord was telling me, say, son, this is what I was trying to tell Sidon. He said, I was trying to tell Sidon something simple. We are in Ezekiel chapter 28, starting verse 20 to verse 26. He said, I was trying to tell Sidon, Sidon, you will be judged. Yes, you will be judged because you 
divided my people. And you used my word to indoctrinate them, to, to put a doctrine that is not mine. That's what the Lord was telling me. He said, and from that doctrine, those, those different doctrines, you created groups. And from those groups, new doctrines came up again, came out again. New ways of doing things that I had not established. That's the Lord talking to me when I was writing this. He said the glory was centered on other gods, on other things, on other people. And that's where witchcraft started. Witchcraft started by the division of the people of Israel. The reason why today the church cannot fight efficiently witchcraft is because there is too much division in between the Christian. 45,000 denominations. And I'm sure some denominations, there's like 10 people in there. We don't even know what they are doing. They're just doing something. Let me take you somewhere. Do you guys remember Jezebel in the Bible, right? Jezebel, the, 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 the wife of King Achel. Do you remember her? Jezebel was a Sidonian. Jezebel was coming from, from Sidon. If you didn't know, because her father was the king of Sidon. And at the same time, the king of Tyre, but mostly the king of Sidon, because when you go in 1 Kings 6, 31, it says, Achab married Jezebel. He took Jezebel as wife. And Jezebel, and, it, and the, there's a precision in there that says, Jezebel, daughter of Edbal, king of Sidon. And Tyr. Another version would precise Sidon and Tyr. So God is telling us that here, thousands of years after God says, he's speaking to us, he says, it's explaining to us in this sense, he says, that the presence of Jezebel in Israel was not an hazard. It wasn't just a coincidence. Why? Because the only way to destroy Israel was to divide Israel and to make people think other things than the word of God. Now, I just want us to react, to notice this. What destroys the, the church currently and what creates extremism in the church is just the fact that we forgot that we have the same base, which is the word of God. And we want to think the way we want to think. And then that way we want to think becomes a doctrine becomes a belief and we and some of us just decide to follow stuff that God had never established add book to the Bible great stuff like if you buy this this water if you buy this soda you'll be what is that witchcraft in the church extremism in Satan is witchcraft That division that happened in the church thousands and if not millions of years ago, that division that happened created the, that that's where witchcraft started to be high in the church because Jesus, the Sidonians understood that if the church, if Israel was united, there would be a catastrophe for them. They would be destroyed. So they, so they divided Israel before Israel could divide them. We are speaking word, but we are also speaking church history. God is making us understand this. The only way to destroy Israel is to divide them. Amen. And let me, let, and I'm almost done. I'm really sorry to take to take up a little, a little bit more time. Now, we see here that when it comes to tear, the Lord is not trying to kill. But when it comes to sin, the Lord says clearly, 
He says clearly, let me read it to you real quick. He says clearly for tear. Because I am against you, O seed, and I will glory. Sorry, but when it comes to seed and to tear, he doesn't want to destroy. Or, he doesn't want to kill. He doesn't want to, not kill, but he doesn't want to end, the, end that life. But when it comes to seed, where that division and witchcraft starts, he says this. I'll glorify, I'll be glorified in your midst, and they shall know that I am the Lord. When I execute judgment in her, and I'm hallowed in her. For I will send pestilence upon her, and blood in her streets. The wounded shall be judged in, the, in her midst, by the sword against her on every side. They shall know that I am the Lord. The Lord says clearly, you, you will Die under the sword, under the pestilence, just because you practiced witchcraft and you thought that it was, it was church. You thought that it was things that I had established, but no, I didn't establish that. You, denomination, obedience, you decided to do it and you thought it was me, but it wasn't me. But the Lord say, I will come and take my children back, but then I will destroy those dividers. Those people creating divisions, I will destroy them. Church, it's time to wake up. Let's stop being dividing people. Let's stop thinking, making people feel like they're not welcome in church. Let's stop making people flee away from this church to go to another one. Let's stop making people flee away from the real word of God to go to places where they will diminish the word of God. Let's stop judging people. Let's stop that. Just because we are dividing the church without knowing and we are creating more and more denominations because people who are not happy in one church will go and create their own doctrines and then divide more and more and more and their witchcraft has its place in the church. Because the church is not united. Extremism incident is about that witchcraft that the church itself sometimes has established. Instead of fighting Sidon, we fight each we fight the church. We fight brothers and sisters. Let's fight the right thing. Fight the source of all these issues, which is Sidon, which is Jezebel, which is all those things. The, uh, do not fight the church. The consequence of extremism in the church is that we are destroying what God is trying to build. Amen. We are destroying what God is trying to build. Come back to the church. Come back to Jesus. Do things the way God says in his word. God never looked at somebody and say, you are too dirty to come in my in my church. But we look at people and we and we and we look at them so down when they come to church and they smell a certain way or they are clothed a certain way. And then they flee away. And then they don't want to listen to the word anymore. Just because we made them flee away. Church, stop. Let God do his thing. People of God, it's time for us to re-educate ourselves. It's time for us to see and do things differently. It's time for us to stop using God for our own interest and start to serve him and let him use us. It's time for us to stop dividing the church, to stop having stupid issues, stupid problems with brothers and sisters. It's time for us to fellowship. Church, let's come back to the essence. And the essence is the word of God. The essence is, G is Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we, 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 I thank God for this word and we pray. It's a reminder for myself too. Amen. Here's the end of my teaching for tonight. If you have any questions, any prayer points, we can take them. If not, we just pray and close. Any comments, any questions? No, nothing. Okay.
Be lifted high. Be lifted high. Oh Lord, be lifted high. For you are holy, righteous and worthy. Oh Lord, be lifted high. Thank you, Lord, for your grace. Father, we thank you so much for this teaching. Thank you for this reminder. Thank you for this correction. Help us, Lord. For we shall apply what you said. We shall think it through and digest it. And apply it. We don't, we don't just want to wanna receive it. We want to we wanna apply it. Help us, Lord. We need your help. We need your help. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we've prayed. Amen. I pray for this church. I pray for this ministry. Thank you for your hand, Lord. Help us not to be judgmental. Help us not to divide, but help us to bring people in. Help us to do your work. Not to use you. Not to overthink, not to think that we are so right or so righteous. Help us, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Cover this teaching with the blood of Jesus. I cover the, the ears that heard it with the blood of Jesus. That they shall understand, they shall be covered. And nothing shall come and remove this. Nothing shall come and, and displace or misplace this word that you just gave. Thank you, Jesus Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we have prayed, we cover it with the blood. Good night to you. Amen. Take care. Good night.